So now we've set up our uh, beverage and framework. So it's very simple. It's just saying, uh, it's just saying that there are two sources of, um, you know, wastefulness in the economy from the perspective of social welfare, the unemployed workers or recruiters, because they don't contribute directly to uh, generating welfare. And uh, so a key piece of structure is that, of course, recruiters and unemployed workers are related to uh, the beverage curve. So now, in this beverage and framework, what's going to be the social planner's problem? Uh, So here the idea is your social planner, you have this, all these people who are in the labor force, and what you want to do is allocate all the people between being producers, being recruiters, and of course some of them you'd have to put them into unemployment. Because if you're a planner and you're like, oh, I don't want to put anybody into unemployment, you know, because the beverage curve holds and the planner cannot get around that beverage curve, that's a feature of the economy, we know that if the unemployment is zero, you need an infinite amount of vacancies. Um, therefore, you, know, you need infinitely many um, recruiters, uh, you know, which is not something that which is not something that you would want to do. Um, so, you're the planner. You want to allocate labor. Uh, so, at, at some at some high level, the social planner's problem is to allocate um, labor across, so those three activity across producing, recruiting, and job seeking. Uh, to maximize welfare. So that's, that's what the planner does. So now, um, how does that look? This is, you know, uh, the abstract description, but now how does that look mathematically? So mathematically, that looks like what you want. To, so you want to maximize welfare. But we said that maximizing welfare was exactly equivalent to minimizing wastefulness. And here the two sources of wastefulness are unemployment and recruiting. So this is equivalent to minimizing U, the unemployment rate, plus V, the vacancy rate, subject to, of course, the key assumption of the beverage curve, which is that V is V0, some parameter divided by U. So here there are two ways to proceed to solve this problem. So one is that you have a very uh, intuitive way to approach the solution of the social planner's problem. Um, and it's to proceed by symmetry. So you see we're minimizing u plus v. So it's completely symmetric, the objective function in u and v. So we can proceed by symmetry. So this problem, you can rewrite it as min u plus v subject to v u is equal to this v0 parameter. Once you rewrite it like this, so you see that the problem is exactly symmetric in u and v. Objective function u plus v is symmetric in u and v. u and v play the same role. The constraint v u is equal to v0 is completely symmetric in u and v. You could, you know, you can uh, exchange u for v and you get exactly the same problem, okay? Uh, so, the social planner's problem is um, symmetric in U and V. So what that means is that you know this symmetry means if I replace U with V, if I exchange U and V, I you know I get the same objective function, I get the same constraint. So it means that if U so we get some U that's optimal, then it has to be that V is uh, takes exactly the same uh, takes exactly the same value, right? Because if I solve my problem and have u and v that have different values. Uh, you know, when I flip them because of the symmetry of everything, I should, you know, I should. So we can uh, simplify a bit this minimization problem by plugging 
the constraint directly into the objective function. So we're going to minimize over u, u plus, and here I replace v by v0 over u. So this is like, this is a very simple problem. So that's what the social planner wants to do. Find the u that minimizes u plus v0 over u. Um, so <clears throat> here, of course, u is linear. v0 over u, it's an hyperbola, so it, it's uh, strictly convex. The sum of a linear function, correct function is convex. So here you have uh, a convex objective function. There are no constraints. So here you have a convex uh, minimization problem. Uh, so these problems are, of course, very well behaved. The way to solve it is that you take your first order condition because you know that first order condition is going to be not only necessary, um, but also sufficient to find the global minimum of uh, this objective function. So first order condition is necessary and sufficient for global to find the global minimum. Okay, now the first order condition, uh, this is very simple, first order condition, so u takes the derivative, so it means that the derivative of u plus v0 over u du is equal to 0, so this means that 1 minus v0 divided by u squared is equal to zero. This means that um, u square, once I uh, reshuffle things, u square is equal to v zero. But you remember that uh, so u square has to be equal to v zero. That's uh, that's our optimum. So we can rewrite this as u is equal to square root of v0. Let's call it uh, u star. So u star is equal to square root of v0. So this tells us that the efficient unemployment rate is determined by the uh, location of the uh, Bavridge curve, because you remember the Bavridge curve, its equation is, uh, so this is the location of the Bavridge curve. That's because remember that the Bavridge curve, you can rewrite it as u v is equal to v zero. So what we learn from this is that the location of the Bavridge curve is what's going to determine the efficient unemployment rate. But you see, here the problem is that, um, and here we get back a bit into this idea of sufficient statistics. V zero, the location of the Bavridge curve, that's hard to measure. You know, you need to. Um, you need to estimate, um, you know, your beverage curve and find and find that parameter that you cannot observe directly to see like where the location, where the beverage curve is uh, located. But of course, we know that the expression, the beverage curve here, we assume always holds, and v zero is equal to um, u times v. So what what I know is that using this constraint, u star is, uh, uv is equal to v zero. It means that u star is in fact equal to square root of uv. Um, because um, here in my optimization problem, the constraint uv is equal to v0 always holds. So I can plug in this u times v instead of v0, and I get this very simple formula that the efficient unemployment rate is square root of uv. And you see, square root of uv is much better than square root of v0, because v0, I don't observe it. u and v, I do observe them. Um, This is a much better expression. You know, that the idea of sufficient statistic is always express your policy results in terms of stuff that you can directly see in the data. Uh, so here, if you want u and v, there are sufficient statistics. If I know u and I know v, I can figure out uh, u star. Um, okay. So what that means is that this is uh, in word. Here it means that the efficient unemployment rate. is a geometric average.
So it's not an arithmetic average where, you know, which would be u star is equal to u, v, u plus v divided by 2, but it's a geometric average of uh, an employment rate and vacancy rate. So this is very simple. Um, somehow this formula was actually not known, um, which is uh, was very puzzling uh, when we stumbled upon it that nobody knew that in this simple setup. Although, you know, these are, you know, beverage curve has been known for a long time. Nobody actually estimates elasticities of beverage curve for some reason, but if you do that, you notice that it's actually an hyperbola, um, assuming that unemployed have don't contribute to welfare. That actually, that's something that Joan Robinson noted that unemployment is just sheer wastefulness, noting that vac vacancies require recruiters that's well known. And once you do that, if you assume that number of vacancies is the same as number of recruiters, which seems to be the case in, the, in uh, at least US data, you get that very simple and quite beautiful formula that the efficient unemployment rates, the geometric average of the unemployment and vacancy rates. Uh, <clears throat> and so then, because we have U, because we have V for a long time period, then we can compute the efficient unemployment rate. Uh, uh, we can uh, compute the efficient unemployment rate that way. Um, and so, in terms of theory, like how broad is the range of model for which this is valid? Well, any model in which welfare is determined by the number of producers, and there is a beverage curve that's uh, an hyperbola, and then you ask, and then uh, unemployed don't contribute to welfare, recruiters don't contribute to welfare, then this formula is going to hold. Um, so that's true, like irrespective of the position of the beverage curve and irrespective of how producers enter into the welfare function, the formula remains valid. Um, now, of course, you can, you know, this is like a really basic formula. I think it's, it's quite beautiful. It's quite accurate in the US. Um, but we'll see that if you want to relax some assumption, for instance, you want to have a more general recruiting cost, you want to have a, like more general, uh, you want to have home production that's non-zero, you want to have a formula, a um, beverage curve is not an hyperbola, but has a different elasticity, you can generalize this formula and get something that involves extra sufficient statistics. Um, but here at least, that's what we get in this baseline, uh, in this baseline and simple uh, in this baseline and simple modeling.